Hey everyone, Rob here, and we have breaking news. Well, last minute news. The Blue Lagoon has now reopened as of today, January 6th. You can see the announcement here saying that they are opening Saturday, January 6th with the Blue Lagoon, Blue Cafe, Lava Restaurant, Retreat Spa, Restaurant, all the stuff that they've come to do. The hotels and stuff, they need a few more days on that. So the Silica Hotel and the Retreat Hotel um, that they're looking at, at Wednesday uh, is going to be opening up, which is uh, January 10th. So if you are going to be going there, take a look at that. If you're looking to book the Blue Lagoon, of course, take a look at uh, their website and book there. Now, if you're going to go by yourself, though, still no information on what's going on because the roads, according to road.is, which is the uh, you know road administration of Iceland, you can see as of January 6th, we're looking at here, driving is prohibited on all roads leading to the Blue Lagoon. So I'm not quite sure what's going on here, uh, because how are you going to get to the Blue Lagoon even if it is open? It doesn't really uh, make sense to me, but you can see that there are traffic data. There's, of course, uh, monitors and things like that for the traffic that's going through. The Blue Lagoon is right in here, this bottom area, so you would have to come down this prohibited road and then of course go over to the area and you can see the traffic 17 cars in the last 10 minutes and 691 cars since midnight and so they just checked a, a few minutes ago so kind of strange that they reopened but then uh, it's seemingly that you cannot go over there now coming to a bit of a bigger set of news the meteorological office here in Iceland has released a statement and they have updated their risk assessment map, which we can see right here. And they say that the land rise is still measuring at Svartsengi with a similar speed as the last few days. And it's all confirmed with GPS data. And they discussed all this at a consultation meeting of scientists organized by the Icelandic Meteorological Office. And uh, as reported, this is an indication that magma pressure is building up, increasing the likelihood of a new magma flow and also an eruption. Now, however, it can't be ruled out as an indication that it reduces magma inflow, all coming from them. They say almost 490 earthquakes have occurred since Tuesday, January 2nd, and of these, 14 are over magnitude of 1, with largest at 1.8 in sort of the north of Hagafet, which if we zoom in on this map here, we can see Hagafet is down here, um, just a little bit off from the Blue Lagoon uh, right here in this sort of red zone. And we'll talk about the red zones in just a minute. Now, the earthquakes, they say, that occurred last January on the 3rd, uh, which were the big ones, uh, relatively speaking, for Iceland in the past little while, um, those, they say, are just known as just earthquake cracks, where larger earthquakes have occurred several times before. There's no signs that those are directly related to mag magma movements. Uh, however, the large land changes that have occurred in Reykjanes in connection with the magma tunnels in Fagrasfeld, Svatsangi, the magma tunnel in Sunhuk on November 10th, and the eruption on December 18th have been observed on the entire western side of Reykjanes in effect seismic activity in the entire region. They still say it's the opinion of scientists that if there is an eruption, it is most likely that it will erupt again on Sundnuk's crater series between Stor Skovet and Hagafet. And so, again, that's kind of this area here, which we can see Stor Skovet is here, and then Hagafet is down right here. And then, again, we have Svatsengi, the power plant, and the Blue Lagoon just off to the side of that. Now, remember, they did build protective barriers around the Blue Lagoon and the power plant, and they're also now building the protective barrier along the top of Grindavik, kind of where this red and the orange meet. So, yeah, they're, they're saying that it's important to remember that all of this magma movement below the surface and these magma flows don't always end up in, a, in an eruption, um, such as some activity with Fagersfeld. So just an, an interesting thing that, uh, that they said. Now, the new risk assessment map that they've published, which we are seeing here, reflects the hazards in the Grindavik Svatsangi area as they've assessed on January 5th, when this um, sort of new map came out. The hazard assessment is based on the latest data again, including earthquake, deformation data, model calculations, you name it, they've been looking at it. The probability of a vol volcanic eruption is also assessed 
in all six areas which are defined and you can see here um, this is is sort of area one two three four five and six with uh, the blue lagoon in area one and Grindavik in area four so the main change from the previous one if we look at the previous one just for a second we can see there's the big change we have a color so the main change is in this Svartsengi area, this zone one, which is, is where the power plant and the Blue Lagoon is, it's now considered to be just like a bit dangerous, but a decrease from the last version of the map, uh, sort of lowering in danger levels. So that's what that going from orange down to, uh, down to yellow basically means. The reason for this change, they say, is this, this sort of formation of large cracks on the surface is considered smaller. There's no new cracks that have been formed recently. And the interpretation of monitoring data by scientists at the meteorological office's consultation meeting suggests that the Sunhooks crater series between Stor Stor Skogfeld and Hagefeld is by far the most likely source of an eruption. Now, they do want to emphasize again, as they always do, it's important to emphasize that the last eruption started with very short notice and the meteorological agency continues to monitor the area carefully around the clock and is in direct contact with civil defense about the situation. What I find a bit strange is um, how close the Blue Lagoon and the power plants are to basically the eruption area. They say that it's going to be closer to Hagafet if it erupts than anything else, which is, you know, very very close you know, if we're looking at down here on the uh sort of the legend here of how the distance is i would say if it erupts it's like what one kilometer from the blue lagoon perhaps a little bit less maybe a little bit more um which is a bit concerning that they've opened up the blue lagoon if there's an increased risk of an eruption I know that these aren't you know powerful eruptions that are going to be shooting rocks up into the sky uh, but for me if they are still closing the roads and prohibiting driving down these roads due to the danger associated with this area then how can they possibly open up the blue lagoon i don't really see the connection between the two because of course i would love to be able to go to places like the blue lagoon and be able to go take a look at grindavik and and see you know what's been going on and be able to report from there um, but of course the roads are closed and i'm half thinking of driving down there and seeing perhaps this map is outdated everything i know is they update this all the time because they've updated the spots of ice and things like that so very very curious as to the reasoning behind downgrading the blue lagoon opening the blue lagoon back up but then yet still prohibiting traffic from going down towards the blue lagoon so if you have any insight on, in the comments, I mean, I would love to hear it because, um, yeah, I don't really see the correlation between uh, between that. I know when the Blue Lagoon previously opened, they allowed only tourism buses to come in and out. Again, I don't I don't really see the harm in letting uh, normal people's cars go go in. If we take a look at one of these cameras here, we can see, uh, yeah, there's a bit of a uh, there's some cars going on here. But not much traffic so let me know in the comments what you think if you have some insight onto why this might be that they prohibited driving but they will allow tour buses and things like that to the blue lagoon previously so thank you so much for watching i hope you found this useful if you're going to blue blue lagoon let me know how it is and uh until next time thanks so much